let us enter into synchronous machines in synchronous machines first thing is like you know we love sinusoid okay in ac machines we love sinusoid why we love sinusoid because the biggest customer of us who is biggest customer for us induction motor okay in induction motor it will react for like you know induction motor react for positive sequence also negative sequence also induction motor will react for like you know uh, fundamental harmonic also fifth harmonic also seventh harmonic also our proper rmf cannot be produced all these things i will discuss in induction okay so like you know induction motor will work better if you supply sinusoid okay so in our like you know in our complete life of ac machines we think of everything should be sinusoid if anything is non sinusoid what we do means any non sinusoid we don't even look into it directly we will give it to fourier fourier divide it into so many sinusoids any non sinusoid then we will bring and we will take fundamental yes the required one remaining all we call it as harmonics okay so it means in ac machines we don't want to have any non sinusoid at all if any non sinusoid come we call them as like you know except fundamental remaining all we call them as harmonics okay so like you know our biggest customer which is induction motor behave properly work properly with sinusoid so we decided to generate sinusoidal voltage to circulate sinusoidal currents everything should be sinusoid only we say okay now there are three steps which we have to enter now after that three steps we will enter into armature reaction what are those three steps first of all stator stator and rotor okay so basically our field actually in the basic concepts of rotating machines we discussed by considering armature in the rotor also and by considering armature in the stator also our field in the what do you say rotor also and field in the stator also now in dc machine there is no other way we have to compulsorily keep the armature in the rotor only rotor only but in ac machine there is a flexibility because in dc machine commutator is the problem commutator is a mechanical rectifier so in order to operate it as a rectifier rotation should be there mechanically so armature should be there in the rotor only but in ac machine there is a flexibility we can keep my what is armature either in stator or rotor that thing we have to discuss first and second thing is how to for example our uh, faraday's law okay faraday's law of electromagnetic induction my induced voltage directly proportional to flux density r equal to blv yeah, about sin theta and all forget about it we'll see later okay so means my if my flux density can be sinusoid automatically induced voltage will be sinusoid so in the second step we will try to make my field flux as more sinusoidal as possible because if you can make uh, field flux sinusoidal or flux density sinusoidal automatically induced voltage will be sinusoidal okay we will try our level best and the third phase is even though flux is having harmonic component how to make induced voltage a better more sinusoid is going to be the third concept okay first thing is like you know we have to uh, means where which is better to keep armature in the stator or armature in the rotor let us consider okay see for example armature volume of copper will be more or field uh, volume of copper will be more okay if you think of armature volume of copper will be more because volume of copper is nothing but volume of power handling capacity okay so in a machine field will be there to set up the just the flux and the armature will be there armature power handling capacity is nothing but the power handling capacity of the machine okay so my armature has to handle more power more power in the sense more volume of copper is required okay now my armature is the like you know volume of copper will be more the moment volume of copper is more volume of insulation also will be more okay now let us think of volume of insulation for example for example in the design of insulation there are three design constraints what are those first thing is for example if i take this as an insulator okay if i take this as an insulator for this insulator if i say 100 volts it can block okay now if i supply across these two terminals more than 100 volts it will break down okay so voltage rating will be there for the insulator 
and second thing is second thing is temperature for example if this can uh, block up to 100 volts maybe at 100 degrees centigrade but if i maintain at 150 degrees centigrade it may fail even for 50 volts also so temperature is going to be the second design constraint and third thing is mechanical stress for example for normal in normal without having any mechanical stress it can block 100 volts if i supply mechanical stress if i supply mechanical stress it can break down even for 10 20 volts also so means there are three conditions three constraints actually voltage capacity should be there and temperature and also mechanical stress now if you think of in rotor mechanical stress will be more and in stator mechanical stress will be more in rotor mechanical stress will be more because centrifugal forces will be there okay so the moment mechanical stress is more on the rotor on the rotor then like you know hard composition materials means problem here is very simple okay if mechanical stress is more i'm not saying i cannot design the machine but i'm saying means we need more investment because if you think of pvc if you think of uh, like you know mica okay these are uh, asbestos asbestos these materials can bear like you know more mechanical stress but they are costly okay if you think of oil impregnated paper just take the paper oil oil impregnated paper oil impregnated paper cost is less okay so here point here is in rotor in rotor mechanical stress will be more okay and in order to block or in order to bear that mechanical stress we want hard composition materials like asbestos and all and those hard composition materials are costly now armature 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 need more volume of insulation more volume of insulation if you keep it in the rotor centrifugal forces will be more mechanical uh, stress will be more so we may have to use asbestos or mica so cost of the machine will be more so don't keep what they say armature in the rotor let us keep armature in the stator okay now if i see for example we have to keep in the stator only if i keep in the stator what are the other advantages like you know here a a dash b b dash c c dash will be there okay so this is going to be the output voltages and after that maybe here i'm going to keep field winding if i keep field winding for example this is dot this is cross dot cross okay so this is going to be n pole this is going to be s pole if i rotate this automatically inducer voltages will be there now what is one more advantage of keeping like you know armature in stationary for example if i keep armature in the rotor so three abc terminals so three slip rings are required and what is the voltage level of armature around 11 kv has to be produced okay so what is the voltage level is more if voltage level is more volume of insulation will be more at the slip rings okay so if it is the shaft if it is the shaft upon the shaft i have to keep insulation upon the insulation i have to keep the hard drawn copper ring okay so upon the ring i have to keep the brushes so the ring will rotate brush will be in contact with the rotating part such that it will be able to collect the current okay so if i keep for example these three in the rotor in the rotor then what will happen three slip rings are required three slip rings are required the two with a voltage blocking capacity of 11, around 11 kv of course by root three per phase okay but if i keep like you know uh, armature in the stator and field in the rotor how much will be the field voltage maximum 125 volts minimum to 625 volts okay so around 500 volts let us consider so field winding field winding is supplied with around 500 volts so voltage like you know is less so mica is sorry insulation upon the shaft will be less and how many slip rings are required only two slip rings are required because field will be supplied with dc okay so only two slip rings are required now what about the size of uh, size of brush okay for example here currents will be mega amperes here field current will be hundreds of amperes hundreds of amperes so hundreds of amperes in the sense size of the brush will be less okay field current but thousands of amperes are mega amperes means that my what do you say size of the brush will become high so if i keep my armature in the rotor armature in the rotor three slip rings are required and between like you know shaft and slip ring we may have to supply more insulation and that too size of the brush will become damn high so it's better to keep armature in the stator now let us enter into second one 
how to make field flux more sinusoidal okay means armature is kept in the stator for sure forget, forget about it now if i can make field flux density more sinusoidal induced voltage will become more sinusoidal that is first step and after making this field flux actually we cannot make field flux more sinusoidal we will try to make it as a better sinusoid and after that definitely harmonics will be there harmonics in the sense don't get scared it is non sinusoid that's it so though it is non sinusoid how to reduce uh, harmonics or how to make it better sinusoid induced voltages we are going to discuss in the next session